your time of the month? I don't get my period dip. I don't have a uterus. Or ovaries. Nerderotic.com. Somewhere out there, there's a great Black Widow film waiting to be made. One that's violent, bloody, sexy, maybe a hard rated R, maybe with guest appearances by Spider Man, Daredevil, Bullseye, or Kingpin. But instead, we got patchwork, lazy makeup Black Widow that ends up making Scarlett Johansson's Black Widow less special. Is this the worst MCU film? Maybe it's close. It's nowhere near good and unfortunately for Disney Marvel you can tell this is storytelling from inexperienced writers including Jack, I don't know how to read a comic book Schaefer. Now there were some good moments and you can tell in the more quiet moments that's where Kate Shortland was the most comfortable and there was a great cast that was completely misused. Maybe if somewhere in the film they explain that David Harbour's Red guardian had personality disorder it would make sense when it comes to reviews it seems i'm saying this a lot these days it's not how you start it's how you finish black widow is part winter soldier part x2 part age of ultron with that trademark marvel humor and marvel morality this movie is not as bad as captain marvel and it actually started out decent despite a horrific theme song but then it devolved into one of the worst third acts in any marvel film and before we get started, just to repeat what everyone has said, and I completely agree with them, Black Widow should have been made five to seven years ago. It should have been part of Marvel Phase 2, and it wasn't. And the reason it wasn't, according to Kevin Feige, was Ike Perlmutter. But Ike Perlmutter hasn't been around since Civil War, and you certainly could have made a Black Widow film then. So Black Widow ends up being exactly what it is, an apology to Scarlett Johansson for making this film after Captain Marvel, and it plays off like an apology from a husband to his future ex-wife after he cheated on her. Scar Joe deserved better despite taking part in some of the worst marketing I have seen since Terminator Dark Fate. And I don't know if this is going to become a staple of Marvel storytelling from here on out, but there's also some of that weird WandaVision and Wonder Woman 1984 morality where as a female, you can do horrendous things. And by the end of the film, if you're sorry for them, then it's okay. Then there's the Taskmaster, which we will get to. I will just say anyone who is a comic book fan, anyone who's even played that character in the video games has a very legitimate beef with that. Black Widow would have been much better off being made when it should have been made a few years ago. They really did try to tone down the TNA. This is me too, Black Widow, but you can't tone down Scar Joe. That badunkadunk is going to badunkadunk. So this is our last chance to see Natasha Romanoff. Are we going to find out what happened at Budapest or Budapest? Are we going to find out how much red was on Black Widow's ledger? Or are we just going to find out why she dyed her hair blonde? Well, there's going to be spoilers, but there's not much to spoil. Natasha Romanoff is dead, and she stays dead. We do find out where she got that vest. We start things out in 1995, suburban Ohio, and we see a child riding a bike who was supposed to be Natasha Romanoff, but it looks suspiciously like an androgynous TikToker. Unfortunately, the opening scene is the best scene in the film. The kids do a good job. Rachel Weisz looks great. The de-aging is spot on. They've done a great job job with that you got to give it up to disney marvel for that one and of course david harbour channels his best jim hopper he's intelligent in control calm empathetic and we never see this character again and no i'm not talking about the accents i'm talking about the personality they are distinctly different i understand it's an act but there's supposed to be layers to this that seem really disjointed the film seems like it was written by committee directed by committee and produced by committee so they're given the orders to go young natasha doesn't want to go Milena, the mom doesn't want to go young yelena thinks she's going on an adventure there's a big car chase to an airport they get into a small plane they escape the fbi and apparently in the marvel cinematic universe anyway in 1995 the fbi didn't have any helicopters or planes that could catch up with a small plane that's flying very slowly to cuba in Cuba, we meet our villain, General Drakov, who we will call Harvey Weinsteinov from now on. The family is separated, and we have to suffer through a horrific cover of Smells Like Teen Spirit. 
Flash forward 21 years to a time in between Civil War and Infinity War. We see a quick phone conversation between Natasha and General Ross as he is closing in to capture her and she obviously gives him the slip. And she goes to Norway to meet the nicest arms dealer ever. Rom-com arms dealer gets put immediately into the friend zone after he gives Natasha a trailer and some of her stuff from Budapest or Budapest leaves very sad and we are off to chase our MacGuffin. We head to Morocco and this is where we meet a very grown up, well, not that grown up, she's five foot four, Florence Pew as Yelena, and she is part of a Black Widow team on a MacGuffin hunt. Florence Pew catches up to Professor MacGuffin, and she guts her like a pig, where her entrails should have been just all over the sidewalk. Even my son pointed this out, and it was just a little Disney cut. We'll just call him a Disney cut. She dies, but not before she breaks the spell on Florence Pew's Black Widow. So it turns out there's a lot of Black Widows and they are all mind controlled and these little vials of MacGuffin can break the programming. The vials of MacGuffin were sent to Natasha. We see it in her box of effects from Budapest or Budapest. And as she's going into town, she's attacked by the Taskmaster, who is clearly a dude. But I have a question for you in the audience. If you're trying to procure glass vials of MacGuffin, do you A sneak up on natasha maybe when she's in the store or b blow up her car well if your answer was b you would be right back to the taskmaster being a dude there are many distinct differences between men and women and one of them is how we walk and that has everything to do with what's between our legs and what isn't between our legs that is clearly a dude that is clearly how a dude walks that ain't no woman it's a man, man. Dude is obviously packing some heat. There's a fight with the Taskmaster. Natasha gets thrown off a bridge, but she manages to get the vials of MacGuffin, and then we're in Budapest. Yep, just like that, we're in Budapest. Yelena finally meets Natasha. They have an unnecessary but pretty cool fight. Then they become besties, and we finally find out what went down, and that's what starts taking me out of the movie. Florence pews Yelena tells Natasha that the Red Room is still active and that General Harvey Weinsteinov is still alive. Natasha thought she killed him and his daughter and destroyed the Red Room. One of the conditions of Natasha defecting over to S.H.I.E.L.D. was to kill General Harvey Weinsteinov and neither Natasha or anyone at S.H.I.E.L.D. bothered to check to see if there was a body or bodies. Oopsie doopsie. Now, earlier on, they briefly allude to Hawkeye, but they don't mention him by name as of yet. Yet. And yeah, that's pretty disappointing. That was your Budapest explanation, which this movie probably should have been about. So we're about halfway through the movie, and here's the setup. Natasha and Yelena have the vials of MacGuffin, and they're going to go free the remaining Black Widows from the Red Room and kill General Harvey Weinsteinoff and the Taskmaster. So far, the movie hasn't been great, but it hasn't been awful either. But this is where things start going south. And when I mean going south, I mean... Hide your kids, hide your wife, and hide your husband because there's f***ing anybody out here. So we're at the Red Guardian prison breakout scene, the big action set piece for the middle of the film. And this is absolutely ridiculous. Our heroes, the Black Widows, kill hundreds of innocent guards and thousands of prisoners who i doubt all deserved a death sentence that's right they take a helicopter to the prison have a big shoot 'em up yelena shoots out one of the guard towers which causes an avalanche and considering this prison is in the middle of nowhere yeah everybody's pretty much dead when they save papa and get him into the helicopter florence pews Black Widow punches him in the face because she's mad, and the first thing he asks his daughter is, Why the aggression, huh? Is it your time of the month? Of course it doesn't end there. Both Black Widows then go on to talk about, I don't get my period, dipshit. I don't have a uterus. Or ovaries. Which we already knew because that was mentioned in Age of Ultron, and oh how times have changed what is empowering now was something that joss whedon got a lot of criticism for just a few short years ago i want to preface this one by saying in my live streams on a consistent basis the audience comes up with better stories than the current marvel writers do in comics and in the films and i'm not the only one to point this out and that makes it even worse they missed a giant opportunity for some real drama here yeah that's what happens when the red room gives you an involuntary hysterectomy they kind of just go in 
and they rip out. Instead, we get a cheap gag and writing on the level of your average CW show. Steve. Oh, well, I was about to talk about fallopian tubes. This is what happens when you hire wine moms to write for Marvel. This brings us to the second iteration of champagne communist David Harbour's Red Guardian. All right, I'll tell you a little bit about the story of this apartment. So I came in here with this amazing designer architect i love these like pocket door things or whatever i understand time has passed i understand that he has been in a russian prison but this is still a completely different character from what we got in the beginning of the film who was in control confident kind empathetic this one is just a dumb brute so, of course, the Red Guardian is an idiot, and he doesn't know how to find General Harvey Weinstein off in the Red Room, but he knows someone who does. Mom, Milena, and we're going to get the whole family together. So, luckily, they safely crash their helicopter very close to where Milena is, and Red Guardian isn't finished. After asking his daughters if they're on their period, he then asks Black Widow if Captain America mentioned him, and then he praises them for completing their mission in Ohio and then going on and becoming some of the most prolific assassins in the world praising them for their ledgers dripping in blood and that's a very disney explanation of a question we never needed answered then we meet melena maxwell and the family is together again so the red guardian was the muscle of the operation and melena of course was the brains because we need women in stem but the sitting around the dinner table scene wasn't bad one of the better scenes of the film because this is clearly where the director is most comfortable and the writer originally scarlett johansson said her real mother abandoned her on the street but melena maxwell tells her that her real mother had been looking for her until general harvey weinsteinoff had her killed which melena knew the whole time and I think this is going to be prototypical Hollywood writing from here on out as they get more and more disconnected from real people. They get a little fuzzy on the right and wrong thing. And while she might feel a little bad about it, that is overshadowed by her pride in accomplishing her mission. Black Widow was going to go out on her own to take out General Harvey Weinstein off, but... Melinda Maxwell says it's too late. I've betrayed you and they're going to come and get you. You have a few minutes. They come and capture everyone and we go to a giant sky base in a cloud above Russia because that's the Red Room. You might have noticed I haven't mentioned the Taskmaster very much. It's because the Taskmaster hasn't been in the movie that much until now. So after they get captured, they escape and we find out that Black Widow cannot hurt General Harvey Weinstein off because of a pheromone. It's at this point in the film I realize this isn't a ScarJo Black Widow movie. It's a Florence Pugh Black Widow movie. In the MCU and in Marvel, Natasha is supposed to be the exceptional Black Widow, the very best of the best. But in this film, she is just another Black Widow. And there is thousands of them. Then... There's the Taskmaster. Say hello. <laughs> no, 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 no. This is the lowest of efforts, even for Disney. This is cheap. This is lazy. And marvel how the mighty have fallen. You should be ashamed of yourselves. Nothing against the stuntman or the actress. They took a job, but they are just flaunting it in your face at this point. They are just whipping it out and going, you're going to take whatever we give you. It's not like Marvel hasn't made bad decisions before, but there were few and far between before Infinity War, hiring Edward Norton, firing Terrence Howard, firing Edgar Wright. But after Infinity War and since Captain Marvel, there have been a lot, including 
Captain Marvel, Brie Larson, turning Marvel into Annette Benning, having Nick Fury lose his eye to a putty tat, naming the Avengers after a test pilot's plane, turning the scrolls into an immigration allegory, allowing Mark Ruffalo to speak publicly about anything. Fat Thor, Birkenstock Hulk, Captain America betraying everything about his character at the end of Endgame, killing Tony Stark for a five-year-old daughter that he probably would have had anyway and the five-year blip. The ending of WandaVision, everything about Falcon and Winter Soldier, including Do Better and Freckle Jesus, and hot off the heels off the not very surprising reveal of female Loki. You know a lot about the characters already, so they're presumptions that you bring to it, and we like to subvert those. <laughs> <laughs> but this one takes the cake because it was so predictable everyone who pays attention to this kind of stuff on the planet saw this coming miles away as with any of my marvel reviews where i am critical i will be called a hater go ahead bring it on obviously i hate this stuff there will also be many who say that my criticisms of the Taskmaster or anyone else's are nitpicks, or it's a mantra. That is the language of either A, the normie who really doesn't understand, B, the consumer who doesn't care, they only want brand, and I didn't mean that to rhyme, or C, the poser who just wants to hitch their wagon onto anything popular for their agenda. Now, I've got nothing against the normies. You are the hearts and minds I am trying to win over, but I'm going to tell you exactly why Marvel made this decision. It had nothing to do with benefiting the narrative or the story and everything to do with Me Too, Time's Up, Intersectional Feminist, Hollywood. Just more proof that the source material is always superior and more proof that Kevin Feige is a sellout the comic book accurate taskmaster would have been much better storytelling wise because you could have had black widow kicking ass on the taskmaster and you would have finally given scarlett johansson and black widow that one moment to shine instead you wasted a villain for a reveal that didn't really go over very well and another opportunity to show the victimization of women because it had been at least three minutes since the last time you showed the victimization of women. When Natasha originally tried to kill General Harvey Weinstein off, his daughter was there and she was aware of it and she just put it down to collateral damage. It turns out both of them survived. So Harvey Weinstein off survived that explosion without a scratch, but his daughter didn't turn out so well. She ended up getting a chip in the back of her neck and then it's explained to us that she can mimic every move of every Avenger. So Harvey Weinstein off sends the task mistress off to do another task so he can monologue a little more about the subjugation of women. And he controls them with a little iPad in his desk. He meanders on about some other stuff that I really don't care about. Taskmaster finally faces off against the Red Guardian and they cut away. And when they cut back, the fight's over. Melinda Maxwell had to save the Red Guardian's ass and she kicks the task mistress into a prison cell. Then Melinda Maxwell goes off and shoots a turbine in the sky base and it starts to crash for the next 30 minutes. Oh, I almost forgot. Natasha can't attack Harvey Weinstein off while he's monologuing because of some pheromone. So she gets around this by banging her head against a desk and breaking her nose. <laughs> Let's see that again. The end of this film is just a mess, so we're going to get through it. Basically, everybody's trying to escape from the base as it falls for the next half hour. The Black Widow fights a bunch of Black Widows, but she doesn't really want to fight the Black Widows because she knows they're all subjugated. Yelena is doing something, and Melena Maxwell and the Red Guardian are escaping in a plane. Somehow, this plane magically avoids all the shrapnel that's falling around it. And at this point, we got to give it up to Harvey Weinstein off's henchmen who are falling to their deaths without parachutes and they are still on the job well done boys everything's going to hell harvey weinstein off has to escape he jumps into a helicopter of some kind and yelena catches up with him and blows out the jet engine she gets blown off she kills harvey weinstein off natasha grabs a parachute jumps off the helicarrier and catches up to yelena gives her the parachute and then somehow the taskmaster finds him so Yelena's falling with a parachute. She's going to be fine. The Red Guardian and Melena Maxwell. And just for those of you who are wondering why I am calling her Melena Maxwell, 
Think about it. Drakeoff didn't kill himself. Black Widow and Taskmistress have a battle because this is becoming a thing with Disney Marvel. We have a final battle with a hero who doesn't really want to fight the villain because they know the villain is just misunderstood or subjugated by an evil man. And that's what we have here with the Taskmistress versus Black Widow. They fight for a second and she rips her helmet off throws the red vial of MacGuffin in her face. Then the Black Widow apologizes. I'm sorry. I'm sorry I watched this movie. And the only words the task mistress speaks in this entire film. Is it God? We see the giant sky base crash very slowly. The family we all got to know throughout this movie reunites for one last time and will never reunite again because Natasha is dead. They end up taking off with the other Black Widows who managed to survive and the task mistress, led by the very woman who chemically subjugated them, Melena Maxwell. As General Ross arrives and Natasha decides to stay back and help get the Avengers back together. Eight weeks later, we see the Black Widow with blonde hair and wearing a vest that her sister gave her. Friend zone rom-com arms dealer gives her a jet and she flies off into Infinity War. The stinger is Yelena at Natasha's grave and because Disney Marvel can't sit with an emotional moment we don't want people to feel sad or unhappy, she is interrupted by Madame Hydra, played by Julia Louise Dreyfus. Now, when I saw the movie on preview night, my theater was a quarter full, and the only clapping at all was by one woman when she saw the picture of Jeremy Renner's Hawkeye at the end of the stinger. For those prisoners of the moment, this very evening I watched Iron Man prior to finishing this review, and I highly recommend you do that before you go on Twitter and say this is a top five Marvel film. It certainly gave me perspective. It's a brilliant film. It stands up today. The only bummer was the stinger at the end, seeing Nick Fury and knowing what happens to him. It's sad to see what the MCU has become. This isn't a good film. The directing was awful. The editing was terrible. The only thing that held it together was a very competent cast with some horrific writing. So the question has to be asked, is Black Widow woke? No. Is it filled with intersectional feminism? Absolutely. It overshadows the entire movie and every decision they make. Apparently, Black Widow did pretty well over the weekend, if you believe Disney and their creative math, but imagine how much better it would have done if it was Black Widow and Hawkeye, and it took place in Budapest, and we got to see what really went down, and maybe they fought a real Taskmaster. And the reason they didn't want to do that is they didn't want Hawkeye to take any attention away from Black Widow, but they ended up taking all the attention away from Black Widow by making her just another Black Widow and putting her in a Florence Pugh movie. And what could have been, we'll never see Charlie Cox's Daredevil team up with Scarlett Johansson's Black Widow. Do you think for one second that Disney hired the inexperienced Kate Shortland and Jack, I don't know who Mephisto as Schaefer to empower women to hear new voices see new perspectives or do you think they hired them because they are cheap and controllable the answer is obviously because they are cheap and controllable and this is confirmation lucretia martell turned down black widow after marvel told her don't worry about the action scene sweetheart in other words, these movies are practically pre-made before the director is even hired. ScarJo got hosed. She was a guest star in her own movie, and you can't even say the Taskmaster was the Taskmaster in name only because she was the Task Mistress. And as far as the Iron Maiden goes, they ended up just using her alias, Milena. And Marvel right now is only Marvel in name only. And I know after a lot of finagling, this movie did very, very well and will have to see what kind of second week drop off they had i struggled to watch part of this for a second time for this review and yes i know i made a lot of mistakes and i probably mispronounced some stuff and i do not care melena maxwell is the biggest problem with this movie if you think about it the black widows didn't really accomplish anything they needed deus ex melena maxwell to all of a sudden flip on her lifelong business partner general harvey weinstein off and lucky for them that she designed the red room probably built it herself she also subjugated 
thousands of women, which led to assassinations, revolutions, toppled regimes, thousands of deaths, thousands of orphaned children that she could later traffic and subjugate. What she did was much worse than Wanda, and they should both be in prison for the rest of their lives. But they won't be because of girlsy power. Don't ask questions. Just consume product and then get excited for next product. Obviously, Black Widow had a good opening weekend based on the strength of the Marvel brand and the popularity of Scarlett Johansson's Black Widow and nothing else. But don't tell Marvel, Disney, or Hollywood that because they think it's because of their social agenda. Now, I want you to think about this. We have just seen the last of Scarlett Johansson's Black Widow. We've already seen the last of Robert Downey Jr.'s Iron Man, Chris Evans, Captain America, Savage Hulk, and unfortunately, the Black Panther. On their way out, the Guardians of the Galaxy, Thor, Hawkeye, and possibly Peter Parker as Spider-Man. Too bad, DC fans, if you had your together this would be a perfect opportunity to take advantage of a very vulnerable and dumb marvel this reminds me a bit of the force awakens days with star wars fighting hypnosis is not an easy thing people do not want to accept that their mcu has seen better days and we are well into the mcu and the black widow was the best example of deliberately missing opportunities so you know there are some who call this a top five mcu film or even the best mcu film when in reality it was just a cheap lazy remake of winter soldier with some x2 and age of ultron mixed in latest disney product consumed prepare to consume next product and prepare to have black widow collect dust on your blu-ray shelf if you like what you heard please like share and subscribe if you didn't like what you heard i thank you for listening this long i'll see you in the next video nerderotic.com please subscribe